A Guilty Thing Surprised by Ruth Rendell Read by George Baker When Quentin Nightingale left home for London each morning, his wife was still asleep. His housekeeper served him with breakfast, opened the front door for him, and handed him his hat and his umbrella, while the au pair girl fetched his newspaper. Next, to speed him on his way, were the two gardeners, saluting him with a respectful good morning, sir. And then perhaps his brother-in-law, hurrying to the sequestered peace of his writer's haven in the old house. On this particular morning in early September, everything was just as usual, except that Quentin didn't need his umbrella. The gardens of Myfleet Manor lay half-veiled by a golden mist which promised a beautiful day. Quentin was a little early. He strolled to the low wall and looked down over the Kingsbrook Valley. The view never ceased to delight him. Hardly another house was visible, only the meadows and the river, winding through its thin sleeve of willows, and there to his left on the other side of the road, the great fir forest. It covered a whole range of hills, and this morning in the mist it looked like a dark velvet cloak flung carelessly across the landscape. He turned his gaze to his own parkland, and he was just considering whether he should take a rose, an iceberg perhaps, or a superstar, when a finger touched his shoulder and a cool voice said, to her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran, and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. Good morning, Dennis, Quentin said heartily. Not a very cheerful quotation to make on a lovely morning. If I'm not cheerful, Dennis Villiers said, it must be because term begins in two days' time, and after that I shan't get any more work done till Christmas. By the way, I have something for you. He opened his briefcase and brought out a book, new, glossy, evidently fresh from the binders. An advanced copy, he said. I thought you might like it. Quentin's face lit with pleasure. He read the title. Wordsworth in Love by Dennis Villiers. And then he turned to the dedication. This he read aloud. For my brother-in-law, Quentin Nightingale. A true friend and patron. Ah, Dennis, that's, that's wonderful. Makes me feel like Southampton. Villiers gave one of his crooked, rare smiles. As long as you like it. Well, as I have work to do, and so do you. Elizabeth Nightingale spent an hour preparing herself for the world. Sample complete. Ready to continue?